coral reefs are some of the most important and diverse habitats on planet Earth. Although in total they cover less than 0.1% of the world's ocean surface area, they provide habitat for at least 25% of all marine species. And I said at least because new species are being discovered constantly in reefs. Even ones that have already been thoroughly studied still yield new and fascinating discoveries. They've been called the rainforests of the ocean, and for good reason. 4,000 different species of fish alone can inhabit just a single coral reef, which is an absolutely huge number when considering just how small coral reefs truly are. Reefs aren't just diverse, however, they're also highly productive. In just one square kilometer of reefs, up to 35 tons of fish can be produced. Not to mention all the birds, sponges, worms, shrimp, crab, lobster, turtles, snakes, and dolphins, which, as you should know, aren't fish but mammals. Just about every last nook and cranny in a reef can be covered in life, with all kinds of different types of life forms interacting. Even predator and prey can coexist here in relative harmony. In a reef, one can get the sense of being in an urban area, a city, comparable to names like Manhattan or Hong Kong. But at the same time, it can also feel alien, like a planet thought up in a science fiction novel. For all these reasons and more, coral reefs are truly one of the most spectacular ecosystems on the planet. Sadly, however, like most other natural habitats on Earth, coral reefs are disappearing fast. Estimates predict that we have already killed 10% of the world's coral reefs, with about 60% of what remains being seriously threatened by human activities. But what's strange is that coral reefs produce huge amounts of fish which we can use as food, and coral as a substance is almost wholly useless to us. It's not like a forest or grassland where we could potentially gain resources like timber or arable land if we destroyed it. And in fact, coral reefs are far more productive in every way if kept alive. So if we aren't clearing them for use, why would we destroy them? What reason is there for this? We can't be doing it on purpose, so what's killing the coral reefs? Well, to properly understand this, first we'll need to know what exactly coral is. You might have heard that coral isn't a plant, but rather an animal, or actually a collection of many thousands of animals. Each individual creature is called a polyp, which are closely related to things like sea anemones and jellyfish. However, polyps have a very special tactic for survival. Once a polyp settles on a place to live, usually a hard and rocky surface, they'll begin building their skeleton. They do this by depositing a compound called calcium carbonate, more commonly known as limestone onto the surface of the rock. This substance is abundant in the ocean as it dissolves from rocks on land and gets carried into the sea, and it's what other creatures use to build their shells. The polyps will continually move themselves up and place more calcium carbonate beneath them, eventually creating a cup-like depression on the surface. They use this depression to store their stomach while they allow their tentacles to protrude out and collect microscopic food floating around in the water. But because they're so small and their skeletons are rooted in one place, individual polyps are highly vulnerable, and if the spot they chose just isn't good enough, they'll die. So, to combat this, they've evolved a spectacular solution to this problem. Groups of polyps can actually link up their bodies to neighboring polyps through a tissue called the sinus arc. So, if one polyp isn't doing too well, the rest of the coral can supply nutrients and ensure their collective survival. Because filtering ocean water can be unreliable, corals also have formed a partnership with an algae called zooxanthellae, which use the sun to photosynthesize and give some of their products to the polyps, while the polyps return the favor. This is called a symbiotic relationship. It's from these zooxanthellae that coral receive most of their food, up to 90% of it, and it's also what gives coral their coloring. So, if the algae were to be become separated from the body of the coral, the white flesh and structure of the coral underneath would be revealed. This is what coral bleaching is. And as weird as it sounds, coral bleaching is actually a defense mechanism of coral. You see, because algae is so vital to the coral, if it experiences conditions that aren't suitable for cultivation of their algae, they'll expel it off their bodies and into the water, with the hopes that it will drift into conditions more favorable for growth. Without its algae, the coral doesn't die immediately, but it will begin to starve. The purpose of expelling the algae is to save it from whatever deleterious conditions the coral has encountered, with the hope that once these conditions have ended, some algae will return and begin to produce food again. But if these new, harmful conditions never end, the algae cannot return and the coral dies of starvation. And now we can start explaining what's killing the coral reefs. If you haven't noticed, there's a lot of change happening in our oceans right now, climate change specifically, as well as several other human-produced triggers. Basically, whatever can change the water around the coral reefs can damage them, including temperature, acidity, salinity, depth of water, daily amount of sunlight, 
concentration of dissolved gases, even the increased motion of the water as the result of increasingly frequent hurricanes can damage coral. And it just so happens humans cause all of these things to change in some way. Global warming increases water temperatures and causes the sea levels to rise. Pollution can leak damaging chemicals directly into the water, while increased levels of gases like carbon dioxide, sulfur oxides, and nitrogen oxides released from the burning of fossil fuels can dissolve into the ocean or rainwater and turn them into acid acids like carbonic acid. This is known as ocean acidification. Another negative impact of this is that limestone, the material that coral and other sea creatures use to create their homes, dissolves more easily when these acids are present in high quantities. Then, the use of fertilizers can create nutrient-rich runoff, which can then result in huge blooms of algae. And while that might sound good, these can both block out the sun, but more importantly, soak up all the oxygen in the water and leave none for organisms like coral. This is called eutrophication. The clearing of forests and other plant cover can cause great amounts of erosion. Once these sediments reach the ocean, they can block out the sun from the coral on the ocean floor, which the algae and the coral need to photosynthesize. Erosion can also be caused by droughts, which, again, become more frequent because of climate change. With more glacial ice melting, increased amounts of fresh water are entering the oceans, which alters the salinity and, again, raises sea levels. Plastics thrown into the ocean can break into smaller, more dangerous particles, which can then accumulate in larger organisms until it becomes toxic. Overfishing can lead to boons in organisms like phytoplankton. With all their predators taken away, they reproduce in huge numbers and again take up all the oxygen, suffocating all other life. Don't even get me started on oil spills, but long story short, they're real bad. And holy crap, there are things like cyanide fishing and dynamite fishing and coral mining for use in cement. Why not just use regular rocks? There's basically an unlimited supply of those. Then there's bottom trawling, where they just sweep big nets across the ocean floor and pick up everything, including coral. Can't eat that. Even sunscreen has chemicals that damage coral. What all this amounts to is a massive increase in the amount of coral bleaching happening globally, with things getting worse every year. The biggest bleaching event ever recorded occurred just recently, over the course of the El Nino cycle of 2014 to 17, where bleaching of over 70% of the world's coral was recorded. Now remember, bleaching doesn't equal death, but depending on where the coral is, bleaching can kill 30 to 95% of the coral. So you might be asking, what can be done? Many people across the earth have realized that killing the corals is a tremendously bad idea, and some have tried to find solutions. Coral aquaculture has developed to grow coral in nurseries first, protecting coral in their vulnerable stages of early growth, and then replanting them in a reef. People have also been submerging things that coral can grow on, like old cars, subway carts, and even used tires, which create more surface area and better places for coral to grow. There's even a method of creating something known as biorock, where low voltage electrical current is ran through a steel frame. This causes calcium carbonate to crystallize on its surface, thereby creating more places for coral to grow. People have even suggested gene therapy to engineer algae that is more resilient to the stresses caused by humans. But the single best way to combat coral bleaching is by fighting the bigger issue of climate change. Ending climate change would alleviate much of the stress put on coral reefs, and we could begin to focus on rebuilding them after that. If you'd like to help the world's reefs, there are a number of great places you can donate to. Check the description if you're interested. The goal of this video was to educate at least a few people about the destruction being done to our coral reefs and maybe, just maybe, provoke someone to take action. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative and would like to see more in the future, consider hitting that like button or maybe even subscribing. I'll be back next week with another video or two. Thanks.